Today we gather on this 25th Sunday after Pentecost, and we give thanks especially for the abundance of the earth and the abundance of our nation as we anticipate our Thanksgiving national holiday. And so let us continue now with our opening hymn. Blessed Lord, who has caused all holy scriptures 
to be written for our learning. Grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and never hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God. A reading from the book of Judges. The Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud died. So the Lord sold them into the hand of King Jabin of Canaan, who reigned in Hazel, the commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Harasheth Hegoim, then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for he had nine hundred chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly twenty years. At that time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Lippidoth, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak of, Abin, Bin, of Abinoam from Kadesh and in Naphtali and said to him, Lord, the God of Israel commands you, go and take possession, position at Mount Tabor. Bring in 10,000 tribes from Naphtali and the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin, Jabin's army, to meet you by the Wadi Kishon with, the char with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into the, your hand. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 123 responsively beginning and ending with the refrain. Our eyes look to the Lord our God, from whom we seek mercy. To you I lift up my eyes, enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of the maid to the hand of her mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God until he shows us his mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, for have mercy, for we have never more than the contempt Too much of the scorn of the indolent rich and the derision of the proud. Our eyes look to the Lord our God, for whom we seek mercy. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. Now, concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober 
For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. journey, summoned his slaves, 
and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the, the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents, and see, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of the many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did I, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, give it to the one with the ten talents, for to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But for those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, Throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. When I was in seminary, our Old Testament professor, Boyce Bennett, I say our because my sister had the same seminary professor when she came to the seminary a couple years after myself. Every class opened with this prayer, blessed Lord, who has caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant us so to hear them read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. And so the challenge to engage the scriptures was set before us to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them. We're at a time in the church year where many of the readings become increasingly harsh. In fact, they are parables of judgment that we're hearing now. And I have a lot of trouble sometimes when you get to the end. In fact, Bernard and I were discussing it this morning, so we may as well go right for our discussion. You know, I mean, listen to how this wonderful piece of scripture ends. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Christ. You know, thanks be to God. Wow. 
And we have to engage the fact that Jesus often used wicked people, unjust circumstances, and other things as good examples of the reign of God. So what's he telling us? What's he telling us? Because it can sometimes come from the side and kind of slap you in the side of the head and say, Jesus, did you really mean that the way it sounded? Because it sounded kind of terrible. I had enough trouble with bridesmaids last week. If you're going to rank the bridesmaids, you know, starting with number one, the ones who you know, showed up with the extra oil and they were all prepared and everything else. You counted down, you made it down past the first five, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think if I had to put myself in the story, I'd be somewhere between bridesmaids seven and eight. <laughs> Not too good. If I was in today's lesson, I wouldn't say I've been a great entrepreneur. Five talents, turning it around for another five, two for another two. I might have come back with one and a half talents. And I'm not sure that would have kept me from outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth the gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Christ. So what are we to do when we hear the parables of justice when they do not contain the mercy we also know is in the gospel? In fact, in the psalm today, so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he show us his mercy. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy. And so that's where we are when we come to the gospel. Clearly, there is a challenge in this gospel to embrace life to engage God, to not just sit back and say, God, you gave me this life, I'm going to stick it in a hole and wait for you to come back. No, there's an invitation to go out and to live, come what may. If five talents produce five more, so be it, so good. If two talents produce two more, so be it, so good. If the best we can do is show up with 1.5, Lord, have mercy. If we show up with nothing, Lord, have mercy. But we can hear, even in the parables where the wicked are held up as a good example, somehow our attention can be gotten that we are being invited into a miraculous and transforming relationship with God, where God, by God's grace, can make something out of us that we can't do. So as we face these gospels of judgment, at this, the end of the church year, we need to hear them. We need to hear them. And we need to remember God's mercy and God's grace because I read them and I keep saying, oh God, but for your grace, what am I to do? What am I to be? And yet, time and time again, we find that walking in his pathway is a fruitful pathway. But it does ask me to step out. It does ask me to venture. It invites me to move forward and not dig a hole to jump into.
can bury myself. And that's hard. But it is good news. Oh God, your grace precedes us and follows us. And when I read these parables, even though I'm showing up with 1.5 talents and I am bridesmaid number seven and a half, may we also be able to say the gospel the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of the one being with the Father, through him all things are made, for us and us.
have, have mercy, mercy on, us. on us. Let us pray for those who, with joy and longing, await the return of the Messiah, that they may not grow weary in well in well doing, but witness to the immediate and everlasting promise of our holy Redeemer. O oh God, for the sake of Christ, have mercy on us. Let us pray for those who celebrate special days or special blessings, that they may share their joy with others, particularly Lawrence Sibley, Cheryl Davis, Eleanor Mockery, Erica James, and Virginia McKinney, and all who are celebrating wedding anniversaries. Those first were celebrating birthdays. For, oh God, for the sake of Christ, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. Let us pray for those whose lives are marked by hunger and need, grief and loneliness, anger and strife, discord and uncertainty, that each may be assured of the grace and mercy of God. O oh God, for the sake of Christ, have mercy on us. Let us pray for those who suffer affliction of any kind, that God, their constant companion and champion, may grant them healing and hope and life. Especially we pray for healing, guidance, or strength for Dorothy Batson, Ivy Martin, Gina Norris, Dolores Thomas, Mac Alexander, Margie Jefferson, Ruby Lockhart, Eleanor Solomon, Stella Jacob, Ernest Reese, Rich Grinnell, Doug Warren, Deborah Blanchett, Warren Dunn, the Roche family, Kristen Scotland Stanley, Rick Cybulski, and Maureen Cybulski. And keep those who are traveling safe this week, especially my nieces and me traveling to be at their parents' side. O oh God, for the sake of Christ, have mercy on us. Let us pray for those who are prevented from praying with us, the persecuted and their persecutors, that they, that which may be convinced of the good news of Jesus Christ and respond with faith and commitment. O oh God, for the sake of Christ, have mercy on us. And let us pray for ourselves that the Spirit will ready us for the return of our Savior and King, that we may enjoy forever the exhilarating life uh, awaiting the faithful in heaven. O oh God, for the sake of Christ, have mercy on us. And let us pray for the departed that they may enjoy eternally the nearer presence of Christ. O oh God, for the sake of Christ, have mercy on us. Because you are God, you hear our prayers. Because you are mercifully merciful, you promise to answer. We commend to you, merciful God, ourselves and those for whom we pray, to the, cru the crucified and risen Lord, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us join in the litany of thanksgiving. It's on page 837 of the prayer book. Or it's respond to each bidding, we thank you, Lord. 837. Let us give thanks to God our Father for all his gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth, and sky and sea, we, we thank you, Lord, for all that is gracious in the lives of men and women revealing the image of Christ. We, we thank you, Lord. Lord, for our daily food and drink, our homes and families and our friends. We, we thank, thank you, Lord, for minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve. We, we thank, thank you, Lord, for health and strength to work and leisure to rest and play. We thank you, Lord. For the brave and courageous who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity. We thank you, Lord. For all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice. We thank you, Lord. For the communion of saints in all times and places. We thank you, Lord. 
Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. To him be praise and glory with you, O Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess against you in all words. Yet to figure out what it means. 
We ask that you bless her, keep her, continue to empower her to be the person that you called her to be. And we thank you for the work of hope in which she has labored these many years. And we pray for our own continued dedication to justice and mercy. In Christ we pray. Amen. Peace of the Lord. We all are <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord in trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and became subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say.
Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as a spiritual food, in the sacrament of his body and blood, send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church family. And good morning to those of you who are well, who are worshiping with us online. Here are today's announcements. We'd like to once again wish a happy birthday to Lawrence Sibley, whose birthday is today, Cheryl Davis and Mary Dunnigan, whose birthday is tomorrow, Erica James, the 21st, Virginia McKinney on the 25th, and Eleanor Moncrief on the 24th. On 12, 16 of 23, the Polk County Charmettes are having their second annual golf tournament to honor cancer thrivers. If you're interested in participating, please contact Shirley James. We'd like to welcome all of our guests that are here today. We'd especially like to welcome the brother and sister-in-law of Mrs. Streeter, Mr. John and Pris Streeter, thank you for coming and honoring Mrs. Streeter. We'd also like to welcome those we haven't seen in a long time, Mr. Mac Alexander. <laughs> Ms. Phyllis Lee, it's good to see you. And it's good to see the Glicksburg family, all except for maybe one. But it's good to see you. It's good to see everybody out to Marie's Burroughs. So welcome and thank you for coming. Thank you all for whatever you gave for Harvest Sunday. We'll be honored to um, partake, all of us. And finally, if you're interested in sponsoring a coffee hour, you don't have to go all out. It could be bagels, donuts, something small, but it's a good time for fellowship. There is a sign-up list in the back of the parish hall. Those are today's announcements. Thank you. I will quickly get unvested and offer a Thanksgiving prayer as we begin our meal. And it is so good that so many are able to be here and uh, from our extended um, parish family and those and uh, so good to see some faces who haven't been here in a while. So blessings to all. Let us sing. <laughs> <laughs> 